How's everybody? How many people have been here all day? Whoa. Man, I need to throw you all a couple of chains, you know, a little bit. Hey, so my name is Joe Jones, and I am with the Center for Urban Families. And I, I want to ask you all, I know you all been here all day, but can you go on a journey with me? I want to take you on a journey through, uh, sort of like Baltimore, right? And let's start here. What do you see? You see Baltimore neighborhood, look like Baltimore neighborhood, row houses. And what you see are dads. These are dads. Don't they look sharp? They're dressed to a T. That's how we roll, right? We dress to a T. And uh, these are the, the dads who are influencing the behavior and the thoughts and the values of their children, right? But I want you to think about the same neighborhoods in Baltimore or any urban community throughout the country if, for, for, for a fact, you see this. They disappear. In our country, we have a phenomenon that's happening. And I'm not sure if everybody's aware of it, although some people may have heard about it. Our last three presidential administrations, from Clinton, Bush to Obama, have all talked about it in various ways. Where, according to the UN Census Bureau, we have approximately 24 million households where dads are missing from the family. And I will tell you that uh, just by example, if you think that we can absorb that kind of absence of men in the lives of children, it's one of the reasons why I believe we have some of the challenges we have in our community where gangs can replace families, and those gangs will purport themselves to be families, and our kids who come from father absent households where they don't have men, and I'm not just talking about little boys, increasingly little girls, emulate are attracted to those types of families versus the families that they originally come from where the dads are no longer around. Now, we got to do something about that. So if you think that the, that's an issue, uh, I want to share something with you. Uh, I don't want to do a lot of data, but I want to give you one data point. There are three zip codes in Baltimore that I want to talk about, right? Our building, the Center for Urban Families, is located at 2201 North Monroe Street. That's in the greater Mondawmin community near Mondawmin Mall. Everybody kind of familiar? So that's zip code 21217. Park Heights, sort of where Pimlico Race Course is, that's 21215. Where Coppin State University is, on the other side, that's 21216. And those three zip codes, collectively, they are approximately 2,400 men who owe more than $20 million in back state owed child support, right? So if you think about what we see here, these dads missing from the home, right? These men in our community who owe a level of debt that it is almost impossible for them to extract themselves from, and we think about the spike in crime that we have historically where it goes up, it comes down, but constantly it kind of stays around the same, right? One of the reasons why we have this is because the men in our community, largely disproportionately men of color, right, are missing from the homes. But I will tell you that this issue of father absence is one that crosses the ethnic and socioeconomic strata, right? Think about it. A man who earns $200,000, has a college degree, uh, works his behind off, right? Has strong ethics and, and values, but he spends so much time working, he spends very little time at home nurturing his, his children. That's a form of father absence, right? But it also translates to the little guy in our community, right? And you can call them whatever you, Corey, Raekwon, Gerald, Larry, Joshua, call them whatever you want, right? But he happens to be a kid who grew up without a father, not understanding what it means to really be a man, not knowing how to control his behavior as much as he would like to do if he could really have a dad to influence how he thinks about things. And he has a child, right, prematurely, uh, which means that he's not probably in a place to take care of the child. He struggles to do so. He drops out of school, maybe sells a little weed. Kind of a common story in urban communities, right? But he gets locked up. He gets a criminal record. Right? He can't get a job. Child support increases. Right? And then all of a sudden, we find him in a similar situation to those men in those three zip codes where over time that child support accrues. He's in a subculture. If he's to have any relationship with his children, 
Those children are also going to be exposed to that subculture, right? He grows up. He doesn't pay taxes, right? Eventually, somebody has to care for him as he ages. So you see how the cycle kind of repeats itself. And that's one of the things that we have been fortunate enough in this country that we now have some dedicated uh, interventions coming from the last three administrations, right, and in philanthropy that are looking at this issue. Now, sometimes it's kind of complicated, right, because men and women, right, do we kind of come at things a little bit differently when it comes to parenting, right? Ladies, you know how you all are, right? The baby falls down, y'all want to grab the baby, kiss the baby, nurture the baby, and what does dad do? Son, man up. Right? It doesn't mean that either one is wrong, it's just that we approach the situation differently. Right? And so I want to share a little bit about my background and hopefully you can, you can roll with me. Right? So uh, I'm a guy who used to live in that lifestyle, the other side of the fence. Right? I started doing drugs uh, after my father left the household. I started when I was 13. Uh, I did drugs hard. I went to jail. I repeated the cycle over and over. I had a son out of wedlock that I wasn't responsible for. And eventually, I was able to turn that around. Well, once I turned myself around, this is 1986, I got married. So I've been married close to 25 years. Y'all got to give me a hand. Fellas, y'all know, 25 years of marriage. I call that being sentenced to life with no parole, right? And my wife, right, when my son, my youngest son, who happens to be a senior here on the campus of Morgan State, he's in the School of Engineering, graduates in May, right? Uh, when he's a little guy and he was, you know, learning how to potty, I was his role model, right? We were in training, right? So we go to the bathroom, I walk in, he wobble in, be you know, behind me. We go to the toilet and, you know, we practice, right? But you know when you practice, you miss, right? Now, you know, ladies, when guys miss, you know, usually y'all do more to clean up than the guy does, right? But we're in training, right? So I got my little guy, and he's working on doing the potty thing, and then all of a sudden, he starts to kind of get it, but he's still kind of missing, right? So I go on a business trip. I come back, you know, a week later, and I said, come on, we're going to go. So I walk in, and he walks behind me, but then all of a sudden, he goes, and he sits on the potty because my wife has all of a sudden decided that that missing does not work for her, right? <laughs> so... Then I got to figure out how I'm going to do with this, because my son is not going to be sitting on the potty to pee, right? <laughs> so what I did, I, I can't build stuff. I don't use my hands really well, but I was smart enough to build a, a, a step stool. I put a couple of pieces of wood together and a, and a little carpet on top of it, created a one-step stool, and then I used it, and I showed my wife how my son could get up on the stool and get leverage. You know, guys, you know what I'm talking about? You get leverage, and he made it in there, right? <laughs> my wife is happy, and my son is like he won the Super Bowl. Right? That's the way in which moms and dads work together in a complementary fashion to raise our nation's children. It's not where we're talking about litigation where somebody divorces and there's all kind of custody and, and alimony. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about working with a guy to work with his, his child's mother regardless of whether or not they're in a relationship. And that's my definition of responsible fatherhood, right? But I want to tell you, some of the, the statistics are our children from fatherless households. These children are more likely to be depressed. They're more likely to drop out of school. They're more likely to become teen parents. They're more likely to use drugs and alcohol. And while we're sitting in this room, there's another group of people across the country sitting in corporate boardrooms who use that data, and they project that our children as they grow into adolescence and adulthood, right, will be the kind of people who will need to be incarcerated. And they use that data to convince governors and state legislators that we should build more prisons. And governor and state legislator, you can't wait until these children get old. you got to build now. And once you build a prison, you have got to populate it, right? And they will do things, right, unconscionable things to make sure that our children get into those prison cells, right? That's why father absence is one of the most critical issues, and we're working very, very hard across the country with a group of my colleagues to create interventions and support systems where no longer are we going to spend $45,000 to incarcerate a dad for criminal activity versus $5,000 it takes to give him responsible fatherhood support and to get him into a job, right? Does that make sense? So I'm going to conclude the couple of minutes. They only gave me a couple of minutes, right? Because we're going to do something a little bit different. We want to, we want to go from this to this. Now, what's the difference between the two? 
color, red, white, right? But what we're going to do, we're going to fill in these blanks. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Baltimore's fathers and their children. This is how we change Baltimore, y'all. Don't go nowhere. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you. Oh, Sarge, what's up? Welcome to TEDx Baltimore, Joe. Oh, thank you, sir. That was an okay talk. It was okay. Yeah. So speaking. one thing, when I, when I met with Joe, and he said, Sarge, I'm going to ask you one question, but don't react. Think about it first. And I'm thinking, Joe, 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 I'm going to say yes to everything. They're not, Joe's got quite an eye for scene, and he said, we have to do something special to, to kind of augment the message. Tell the good people what we're doing. So what happens this weekend? Fellas, what happens this weekend on a Sunday? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, not the Super Bowl. We're actually going to preempt the Super Bowl, and what, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do the Diaper Bowl. <laughs> the Diaper Bowl. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Oh, my dear. Oh, my God. Yeah, this can go either really well or really bad, <laughs> but it's, it's going to be fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, do we have the visual here? Yeah. We need to switch to make sure that the camera has this image, and this image is able to be captured by the video. Is that going to switch? We've got to make sure you all can see what's going to happen here. You know why? How many of you have ever watched the Apollo Theater? Right? Well, you all are going to be the judges of the folks who are going to compete in the diaper bowl. So please, welcome to the stage, Carde and little Carde, right, who's four months old. Also joining us is Roy. Give it up for Roy. Who has a son, River. And River is 10 months old. And then there's Josh, right? Josh's son is named Nathan. And Nathan is four months old. So you got Carday, four months. Roy with River, 10 months. And Josh with Nathan, who's four months. So they have recent dads. So they're supposed to have skills, right? <laughs> Supposedly. Now, so here are the rules for this contest, right? The diaper bowl. Each contestant will be allotted one minute to fully change the infant's diaper. And let's be real clear about this, right? This is a pamper on the baby. However, they have to change it with a cloth diaper. Whoa, ladies, y'all know, you, yeah, okay, all right. This entails removal of the soiled diaper, a complete wipe down and cleansing of any mess, application of baby powder, and replacing the soiled diaper with a clean cloth diaper fastened with provided diaper pins. Each doll is to be treated as a living newborn infant. Each contestant will be judged on exercising delicacy during the diaper changing process. Being rough with the infant can constitute disqualification, which includes sticking the infant with the diaper changing pin while fastening. The winning contestant will be determined based on A, completes the diaper change the fastest with the one minute period, a gentle, nurturing nature was displayed during the process. Upon completion, the designated judges audience, you, will inspect the quality of the diaper change as the final determining factor. For example, the cloth diaper cannot be loosely fastened and there shouldn't be any visible simulated defecation remaining on the infant. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give your attention. Gentlemen, you want to stretch out? Stretch out, come on. And I'll Get, do the time, Joe. I'll do the time. I'll you do the time? Timer. Yeah, whenever so you're Josh, ready. Give us a, a ready, set, go. Okay, one minute. Ready? One minute. 
Gentlemen, start your fingers. Set. Go. Oh. Extra points for the kiss. How many seconds, Josh? 45 seconds left. 45 seconds and counting. Ugh. This is really ugly Joe, up here, what can you tell us about the chemistry there? It's not, is it poop? It is, uh, it's poop. 30 seconds left. <laughs> Uh-oh, here we go. Carde, Roy, and Josh. 15 seconds. Whoa. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands off the baby. Oh. <laughs> All right, now this is what we need to do. We need each dad to pick up the baby, turn the baby around to face the audience so the audience can judge who is the most proficient, proficient diaper changer of Baltimore City. Come on, all at the same time, hold the baby up. Yeah. Turn it around. <laughs> hold the baby by the arms. <laughs> all right, audience, here we go. Dad number one. <laughs> Dad number two. Dad number three. Our winner is Cardi. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, wouldn't it be better if we parented and worked with guys to do these kind of things rather than incarcerate them when they fall short, right? Thank you all for giving us time and attention to an issue that we feel strongly about.